Uh, Aisha Sar Evans, born 1969, known professionally as Aisha Evans, is the chief executive officer or self of the self-driving car company Zooks. In June 2020, she led the acquisition of her company by Amazon for $1.3 billion dollars. Evans is the first African-American female CEO of an automobile technology company. Wow, that's really cool. That is really, really cool. And you know what? We're going to go ahead and play her video here. So you guys have got to see. When I saw that, I remember reading the announcement. And uh, when she got over a billion dollars from Amazon. It reminded me of, of uh, when when Amazon bought Zappos for 1.2 billion and that uh, deal that was made between them and, and Tony Shea. And it reminded me of that because it was the same amount. I was like 1.2 billion, wow, this is so cool. So let's direct our attention to my new Shiro on my Shiro list. I keep a whole Trello board full of Shiro lists and heroes. Uh, let's direct our attention. We'll be right back. Aisha, when you uh, were thinking about the strategy at Intel and, and transitioning the application of chips for all of these different uses and so forth, how, how did you think about reinvention? How did this idea of only the paranoid survive that Andy Grove started here, yeah. what, what's your philosophy on how you really drive innovation and change? I think that uh, look around you and look at the big problems and the big opportunities in terms of a societal standpoint. That's one. And then from that, start applying. Uh, at Intel, uh, the, the transformation was more that uh, we did so well with the PC that, uh, and you know, when you're doing very well, I guess that's lesson number one. That's the most dangerous thing. Uh, that's time. the most dangerous thing. As soon as you start feeling life is good, it's time to ask some questions. I mean, from, a, from an innovation standpoint, because that means you're starting to saturate yeah. and you have to create the next band. The other thing is, uh, I tell my children, this is a, if you're in technology right now, it's a, at least I feel, it's a golden age. Uh, we have these uh, exploitation periods where there is an invention and then, for example, uh, smartphones, right? At the beginning in 2000, whatever, seven. And then it sort of saturates, then something else happens. And we're at a time because uh, compute right now is so efficient, uh, it keeps on uh, uh, becoming more high performance, larger power envelopes, and then you have AI. Yes, sorry, I have to say AI. I know you're tired of hearing about it, <laughs> but I'll talk about it differently. The, the AI algorithms are not new. Uh, what's new is that the computers can execute them fast enough for you to get information to either have insight or do something. Every single industry, from education, healthcare, financial, transportation, is going to be benefit from this. And I really wish that I could wake up 100 years from now, because I always say if we woke up the people who died 1,000 years ago and we could wake them up now and say, look at what's going on, they'll be like, oh my gosh, I think that 100 years, ago, 100 years from now, we're going to go through a massive change in how we live, love, learn, and connect. And it's because of the technology that we're all grappling with right this minute. How do you do that in a personal way? When you feel about those challenges and, and challenging yourself to really go through a reinvention, to decide that you need to be thinking about new skills and new ways of, of looking at your life, you're a long way from Senegal to Paris to Georgetown to Silicon Valley to leading all over the world. How have you reinvented yourself personally? Um, I, I chase meaning. And if you chase meaning, uh, you have to reinvent yourself. I mean, uh, I think about the play Hamilton. Um, you know, I was born in Senegal, West Africa, right? And so if I followed the linear normal path, I would have a very different life. And so I follow meaning and I, I try and keep myself open-minded to opportunities. And then I've learned to deal with failure. Those are the three things that helped me innovate. I've accepted that by definition, if you're going to do transformative things, if you're going to do things that haven't done before, been done before, but they are worthy, you will fail. As a matter of fact, I always tell my team, if you're bringing me green dashboards, green means everything's on track, everything is great, and you're green every week, at some point I'm gonna say- You're not trying hard enough. Darling, no, <laughs> well, that's a negative yeah. emotion. I'm just gonna say, what's the better plan? 
There has to be one, because we're hitting the normal plan. So to seek meaning and be open and then accept that if you're doing transformative things, occasionally you will fail, and that's a good thing. Alrighty. Alrighty. I'm so excited. Wasn't that amazing? I mean, it was just amazing. And uh, I don't know, Cameron, Neil, as we transition to our next guest, any final comments on Asia? I mean, a billion dollars. My tech sister in the industry, I tell you, she is working it in that uh, transportation. Anything you all want to say before we transition to our next guest? Yeah, I could just see from that conversation, those men were enthralled by her intellect. And to me, you know, just seeing uh, an African-American lady just speaking it as it is, it was really, really good to see. So that was great. 